50 years ago, I graduated from what was at the time the ninth best, and I think continues to be roughly the ninth best law school in the world and also in the United States, because all the best law schools are in the United States. Um, in the course of graduating, I had already made the decision never to practice. And I'd made that decision based on a number of reasons, and some of those were personal. I didn't feel like it was a, an area that I wanted to really spend my life doing after having attended. But the main and primary and overriding reason was I felt that the justice system in the United States, while the best in the world, had become corrupt. Period. I found, I found that the people I was going to school with were only interested in money. Every single one of them was interested in money and power. They were looking forward to the day they'd be partner. Um, most of them had started law school with high ideals and really believing that they would uh, do something for the little folks. So just let that sink in. <laughs> That's what That would have been their opinion, believe me, if you'd asked. And probably today as well, if you went to the law schools around the country, they want to help the little folks until they find out that they can be partner maybe in three or four years if they really work hard. Anyway, I made the decision not to practice for those reasons. And today we've kind of seen the culmination, kind of the pinnacle, kind of the ultimate example of how the system is being played. And I mean being played. I've spent three years looking at, as you can imagine, thousands of legal decisions, thousands and thousands of legal decisions. You know, every, every one of those law books is like this thick. Um, and there's thousands of decisions. And then the idea of reading those decisions is to learn how to analyze them and to be able to understand how they should be applied in any given case in the future. And then in the classroom, you're forced to really be good at applying those principles or you get made a fool of. <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. So I feel like I read those cases and I feel like I understood those cases and I feel like I had a chance to debate those cases. And so in looking at all of those cases, you see some that make sense and some that don't make sense and some that are poorly written and some that are well-written. But as I've stated a couple of times before, I've now seen two lawsuits recently. One with regard to Tesla and Elon Musk, and now this one, which are just complete nonsense and have nothing to do with jurisprudence the way that I learned it back in 1975, 1970 to 1975, when I graduated. So um, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. I don't think this is going to hurt uh, the election chances of Donald Trump. In fact, they might help his election chances. I'm very hopeful that this won't result in more things happening in the streets that would not be appropriate. Of course, I don't think that January 6th was appropriate in the way that it finished off, although there were hundreds of thousands of people there who were not involved in the violence, and those people had every right to protest or to just, you know, gather and make their voices heard. I'm hoping that maybe maybe there will be voices heard like this one right now, like some of the ones I'm seeing on X right now that feel very betrayed. And you, you got to remember that this entire case started with a district attorney who ran on the principle that he was going to get Trump. How many times have you ever seen a district attorney who runs on the principle of trying to get, to find a way, to find something that they can prosecute the previous president of the United States? This is lawfare. They're calling it lawfare. It's worse than lawfare. It is something that is to be despised. It's to be despised here. It's to be despised in Georgia. It's to be despised on all levels. When have we ever seen anything like Russia again? With the horrible, um, the, 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 just what happened with regard to the FBI, with regard to Hillary Clinton and her and her part in it, and nothing's ever happened to Hillary. Okay, I'm going to get off the rant now. I'm just letting you know um, from somebody who knows a little bit about it and who studies this kind of stuff and who's paid a lot of attention as this, the best you can, because all you can get is the news that's coming at you. But I've tried to read both sides. 
I've read CNN and I've read CNBC and I've read Fox. I've even read a couple of times you've gone to the Drudge Report, and it, who is so far left now, it's it's really hard to, I'm not sure that they can even see the center anymore. But I, I went there to see what was being said. And I can't find any evidence of any kind that would suggest that this trial was straight up. A judge who had a conflict of interest, a jury pool that was only 5% Republican, this is it's just this is the just the big and a, and, a, and a district attorney who said he was out to get Trump in order to get elected. Uh, okay, that's all I got. I'm sorry. I just I couldn't I couldn't not make this declaration. Uh, it is not a political declaration necessarily. Yes, I'm a I'm a conservative, and yes, I hope Trump wins. But it's not a political declaration. This is something that goes a lot lot deeper than a political declaration. This has to do with the direction of our country and our, is this how we're gonna fight future political battles is by taking the uh, campaigners off the campaign trail, putting them in peril, putting them in a position where they might even lose their freedom, costing them millions of dollars in order to fight lawsuits, as opposed to going out there, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I know I just keep going on and on. Does anybody believe that uh, John F. Kennedy's family was not criminally corrupt? Does anybody believe that LBJ was not criminally corrupt? No, people. there's nobody that doesn't believe that. Does anybody believe that really the Clintons didn't do anything during all those kinds of, all the things that happened to the Clintons, that none of that was criminally corrupt? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm done now. Um, and uh, yeah. See you later with uh, Bradford Ferguson. And man, I've got a great program co cooked up for you. So come on back, check that out in just a couple of hours. See you then. It's been great talking to you.